Dunn's theory starts with one significant word. When you consider the word pyramid, you've got pi, which is a phi, and then mid, which is the middle. So when you bring the two together, you've got phi in the middle, and that is essentially what I'm proposing for the Great Pyramid, except that it's not a pyre of combustion, but it's an energetic environment. With that in mind, modern-day engineers like Dunn start to examine the layout of the pyramid's internal structures. Inside of the Great Pyramid of Giza, you have three chambers. You have a subterranean chamber, you've got a chamber that's been named the Queen's Chamber, and one that's been called the King's Chamber. Traditional Egyptologists have been long focused on this building as a tomb. So they've taken the conventional view that the Pharaoh's body was placed in the King's Chamber, and the other two could have been used if the Pharaoh died before the pyramid was finished. However, no human remains or funerary objects have ever been found inside of the Great Pyramid of Giza, but that might be the point. When you look at these chambers through the eyes of an engineer, you see that they might be serving a different function. American engineer John Cadman also supports this theory. Cadman is looking into this problem at the same time as Dunn in the late 1990s, and he really seizes upon the idea that this building has a mechanical function as some kind of pump. Water would flow in via the tunnels from an ancient lake at a higher elevation. The water would then flow through a duct up into the Queen's Chamber and then exit through an outflow tunnel to the Nile River. The next question is, why a water pump? 